minute with the panel. It was a good call on Nylander, wasn't it? Sure Here are the was. headlines yeah, with Elliot Friedman. You should come up with the news, too. You can predict the things that happen before they do. Well, look, like the biggest story in the NHL today, aside from Hockey Day in Canada, is the return of Patrick Waugh. The New York Islanders deciding today to let go of head coach Lane Lambert and replace him with Patrick Waugh. An announcement I don't know if anybody saw coming. Lou Lamorello works his secretive magic again. Now, one of the things that Lamorello said was Waugh was the only person he talked to, and that's why he's here. But one of the things that's clear is seven years after Waugh left Colorado, a move that he again said today should have been handled a lot better, he was getting back on some team's radar. Now, Doug Armstrong, the GM of the Blues, said that when he made his coaching change that he wasn't going to tell anybody who he was talking to and wasn't going to update the process. But there were some teams who suspected Waugh was on the Blues' radar. And Nick has said on his radio show with Justin that when he was in the process in Ottawa, he recommended Patrick Waugh for a, a coaching role there. So Waugh was starting to go, and he gets this opportunity. It's a huge story, and we'll see where it goes. The Islanders play in Montreal next week. Okay, also, it, with uh, kind of around Patrick Waugh, Marc-Andre Fleury passed him last week for second overall in wins with 552. He was injured in a game last night against Florida. The collision with Will Lockwood, and Lockwood had a hearing today, still awaiting the results of this one. Fleury will not play tomorrow, but he remains on the Minnesota road trip. The hope is maybe only a game or two, but thankfully it doesn't look to be anything more serious than that. Vancouver Canucks and the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, so the Vancouver Canucks, big day yesterday. Jim Rutherford, three-year extension in his position. Uh, as you heard in the media conference yesterday, that Patrick Alvin will be coming soon. The general manager, he's getting an extension done as well that they hope to have next week. But the other thing that the fans are also going to be wondering about is the Canucks, uh, what they do at the deadline. And there's no question that they, they are looking hard at a top six forward, somebody preferably with flexibility. And, you know, the word is they're looking at about four or five different players. I think one is Gensel. I think another is um, Lindholm from Calgary, but there's more, and it's you know our job to try to figure out who they are, but there's no doubt a top six forward is on number one on Vancouver's radar. When it comes to Montreal, it was back in December that the Canadians sent Arbor Jackeye to the American Hockey League. He's still there, and from what I've heard, a number of teams have called Montreal and said, well, since he's down there, does that mean your opinion on him has changed, and he could be a available. I understand for Montreal it's been a flat no about Jack Eye and there have been a couple of teams that have asked. I believe your job as Premier of British Columbia. You look great with the legislature there <laughs> in behind you. A serious story going on in junior hockey. Look, a big one. And I don't do a lot of junior hockey stories, Ron. I, I don't have the connection to say that Jeff does in it. Um, but there's a big story developing. Earlier today, well in the, in the summer, the BCHL uh, went independent. It left Hockey Canada, went independent. And earlier today it was announced that five teams from the LB Alberta Junior Hockey League. We're going to leave that league and go to the BCHL next season. Well, in response, the Alberta League said that you know, look, we didn't know about this. This was dropped on us without any previous warning, and they have they have postponed or cancelled a bunch of games involving these teams that are leaving. And the reason we're mentioning it, it's Hockey Day in Canada. This is a big story for the future of hockey in Canada. But also, there are a number of people who've reached out and said they do not like what this is going to happen to the young players. They understand this is politics and that the two leagues don't like each other right now, but they don't feel the players are the ones who should be penalized. And from my position afar, I completely agree with that. I hope there's a solution that makes sure the parents aren't uh, the players aren't penalized for the adults decisions that's great Elliot uh, I'm going to show you a picture of a young hockey player uh, right in the spirit of what you're talking about Callum Crosscurry we had the COVID pandemic and of course we had to pivot and do the show at a neighborhood rink in Oakville uh, Jean-Louis and Mimi Brennickmeyer had us over and the fellow in the back there was 13 years old at the time Callum Crosscurry he's now in the Republic of Korea tonight participating in the Olympic Youth Games so that's just fantastic in his program he plays now for the 16 u16 triple a rangers in oakville they're hosting a massive tournament this weekend so good luck to you callum great season eight of the chevrolet good deeds cup is here get ready to fill the cup like never before between now and march the third post your good deeds on the socials at the tag at chevrolet canada use the hashtag good deeds cup in the hashtag contest, the team that's most eligible could win $100,000 for the registered Canadian charity of their choice. Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada, known throughout the year as Hockey Night in Canada, presented by Rogers. 
David Amber. He's taken away the Donut Disturb sign. He'll be back with the panel.